Hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing today? It is a Monday. Monday, Monday. I had a pretty good day today. It was a good day. I have a lot to do tomorrow, but it'll all be good. I got some things done that I needed to get done today, and I have some more things that I need to do later. I need to move this over. Sorry, I'm late, but I could not get my camera on my computer to open up. But when I restarted it, thank goodness it did, because I didn't, that's all I know about IT. Start it, turn it off, turn it back on. Um, yeah, I know nothing about routing shortcuts and stuff. All right, well, tonight I want to talk to you about uh, seasons of life. What if we thought about our lives as certain seasons that we go through? And I'm going to write a lesson about this. So we may just do the preface tonight and um, read the scripture. And we will get back to Psalm 21, but I didn't think that it had anything to do with this. And I was supposed to do this last night, but I did not. So kind of my word today was battles. We fight our battles on our knees. And uh, I don't know, somehow this is going to work together. Or the glory of God. But let's go ahead and pray. God, we just praise you and thank you for all that you are and for all that you do. We just praise you that you are on your throne and you are in control. And there is absolutely the, nothing that you do not see, that you do not hear. God, thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector. Thank you for being our shelter in the storm. Thank you for being our strength and our refuge. Thank you, God, for um, you are the righteous judge. And you are magnificent and powerful and mighty and miraculous, God. There are signs and wonders that are happening all over this world. And it's by your mighty hand, God. We just uh, we praise you because you are loving and kind and compassionate and caring, trustworthy and faithful. And you are patient, God. You want none to perish. You want all to come to be saved by Jesus. Thank you for calling us as your children. Thank you for loving us. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we pray. Excuse me, my, yeah, my eye itches. God, we pray for the lost. We just pray that you would um, open their eyes and open their ears and open their hearts, God, to truth. And that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. We pray for the prodigals to come home, for them to see where they are and to remember the relationship that they had with you, to return to repent and to be reconciled, God. This is what we pray for the prodigals. We pray, God, for our country. We pray for truth to reign in our country. We pray for truth to be spoken. God, we pray for the Holy Spirit to just move to and fro all over our government buildings, God, and that truth will start spewing out of the mouths of people. And God, we just pray for a revival, revival in our government buildings, God. We pray for revival in our schools, God. We pray for the name of Jesus to be echoed in the halls of our schools, God. Just everywhere, the name of Jesus. We pray for a Jesus movement that cannot be stopped. God, we pray for SoCal Harvest. We just pray that you would ready the harvest that is going to be brought in when they have their um, evangelism event, God. We know. We've seen it. We have experienced um, Harvest America here in Texas, God. And it is the same thing there. We just pray for the many that will come. We pray, God, for all the disasters that are going on. We pray for our border on the south. We pray that it would be closed. 
because we just don't have room for all these people. And, and I know that they did not walk for months. I know that they were flown in and they were bused to Mexico and they walked across the border. There is no way that they have been walking for two months. There's no way. So I pray for truth in that too, God. I pray for the truth in that to come out. Because we're not stupid. And we are your children, God. We are the children of the light. And we have, we know truth. And through the Holy Spirit, we can discern truth and lies. And so God, just, uh, just pray for truth to come out. God, we pray for our country. We pray for humility in our country, that we would humble ourselves before you, God, and that we would submit ourselves as your children, God, that we would walk in your ways and that we would walk in your statutes and that we would commit our time to learning your word, to learning, to praying to you and to praise every day. God, we pray. We pray for this for all generations and for our government to humble themselves and to submit to you. <clears throat> we pray also, God, for the spiritual warfare that's going on, that you will remind us to fight our battles on our knees, God, praying to you knowing that you see everything that's going on, God. You see all the injustice. You see everything, God. We just pray that you would remind us to fight our battles on our knees, God. We pray uh, Ephesians 6 on our bodies every day, God. We just pray that. We need that protection from our enemy. God, we pray that we would go throughout our houses and cleanse our houses of all evil spirits, by the blood of Jesus. God, we just pray for all the people that have lost loved ones because there have been many. We just pray, God, that you would be with them, that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength. God, the Petito family in Florida that's having a, a memorial, a vigil tonight, a prayer vigil for their daughter that has been found, God, we just pray that you would give this family peace, comfort, and strength. And we pray, God, that, that Gabby's fiancé would come forward and would get the help that he needs and that, just, that Gabby would get justice for her murder. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, my friends, my pray and share warriors, y'all are so awesome. I was going to do this lesson last night. I was just tired, and I think I know why I'm tired. Like I have infection in my body, and that really makes me tired. It makes me not want to do anything. So I'm going to take something for that tonight. Right now, we're going to read Ecclesi Ecclesiastes 3. And I also was afraid I was going to fall asleep last night if I came in here because I was really tired. And then, as usual, when I got up and did my dishes and tucked Seth into bed and prayed with him last night, then I um, woke up. Didn't go to bed till one. It happens all nearly every night. I'm so tired about eleven, and then I get up and I do things, and I get a second wind. Okay, Ecclesiastes three, and I'm going to give you time to get there if you need to get your Bible. Ecclesiastes is um, right after Proverbs. So you've got Psalms, you've got Proverbs, then you have Ecclesiastes. Okay, everything has its time. I think I, I shared that picture to advertise that I was coming on. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, 
a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. So there is a season for everything. And as I think back over my life, I've been in many of these seasons. I had, I had an arrival date. I have a departure date. I don't know what it is. God does. I trust God with it. I want to go in the rapture myself. I think that would be so amazing. But if that's not what God has chosen for me, then that's okay, too. A time to plant. There are times to plant, you know, like physically plant food or physically plant, but there's also a time to plant seeds. I think this is a time where we need to be planting seeds into these younger generations. And a time to pluck what is planted. So there is a harvest time. There's a physical harvest time, like of food, like if you planted corn, you would harvest it when it was uh, ready to be harvested. And then you also have a harvest time we are in the harvest. We will see the last harvest before the rapture. Now, there will be another one. There will be a harvest of martyrs during the tribulation. But they're going to die for their beliefs. It's going to be hard. There's not Food is going to be hard to come by. I don't know about transportation. Um, it's going to be a hard time. I wouldn't want to be here. A time to kill. Well, I'm going to say instead of a time to kill each other, I'm going to say a time to maybe kill animals so you can eat. Um, a time to heal. A time to just step back and really let God do the healing. A time to break down. We all go through brokenness. I've been through many seasons of brokenness. But Jesus can restore our brokenness. A time to build up. We need to build each other up. We need to be encouraging one another. We need to, we talked about yesterday, working as a team. We need to work together, not against each other. A time to weep. Yes, there will be mourning. I've had seasons of weeping and being sad. Um, we're all going to weep. We're all going to weep. A time to laugh. Yes, laughter is great. I love to laugh. Laughing is one of my favorite things. And that cat over there can crack me up quicker than anything. Or Seth or Ricky has such a dry sense of humor. He cracks me up too. A time to mourn. A time to mourn loss. You know, it may not even be a loss of a person. It might be a loss of something in your life, you know, that you don't have anymore. And a time to dance. A time to rejoice and dance and be happy. There's a time for that too. I've had seasons of that in my life too. A time to cast away stones. And a time to gather stones. And I'm not quite sure what that means. Um, 
It reminds me of um, the scene of the harlot in The Promise where they all picked up stones and they were going to stone her. A time to cast away stones. And a time to gather stones. A time to embrace. Wow, I missed hugs last year so badly. I just am hugging everybody this year. Because I'm not going to live in fear over a disease. If that disease takes me, then so be it. I'm not going to live in fear. I'm going to live my life. I'm going to live my life, and I'm not going to take uh, something that they're testing. I'm not going to do it. Um, a time to refrain from embracing. Yeah, we did that for a while last year. We refrained from embracing. We had to be six feet away. That's still a joke. I don't believe that six feet is the magic number that you won't get. Somebody won't sneeze on you or cough on you. They might just be a really be able to sneeze really far and be able to cough really far. I just I think it was. I just, I'm just going to pass. A time to gain. A time for us to gain things in our lives. And then a time to lose. A time to keep. A time to keep things. Or people or whatever. <clears throat> and a time to throw away. Throw away things. Oh, I've got so much in this house that needs to be thrown away. A time to tear, a time to tear, and a time to sew. I guess you could think of maybe um, the Jewish used to rent their clothes with, you know, sorrow. They would tear their clothes. Maybe that's what they're talking about. And then I guess they had to mend them or like, I don't know. A time to keep silence. There are times that we just need, sometimes I just have to bite my tongue. And I have been known, I have had seasons of that, of biting my tongue. Just because sometimes it's not worth the argument that's going to cause hurt feelings. And sometimes, especially if it's with your teenagers, kind of wasted time to argue with them about stuff that you know is right. You can always argue in your head, and you can always win that way. I used to do that. I used to argue in my head, and I always won. Uh, and a time to speak. You know, there is a time that we need to speak up. Right now, in our government, around our country, uh, it is time to speak up for truth. It is time to stand on God's word. And it is time to speak up. And in many states, parents are having to speak up for their children. Because their children are not just being taught the basics. They're being taught socialism. They're being taught a lot of things that they don't even need to know. At the age of kindergarten. So there is a time to speak up and there is a time to stand up for truth. A time to love. There's a time to love and a time to hate, although Jesus tells us not to hate. So that's a little confusing. Do we hate maybe the sin and not the sinner? Is maybe that, I mean, this, this is, I was going to say who this was and I forgot. This, um, this is said to be... David's son, King Solomon. You know, King Solomon is the one that prayed for wisdom. And I think he got it, but King Solomon did a lot that wasn't right either. A time of war. There is a time of war. We are in a time of war right now, and it's a spiritual battle. And I don't know if you feel it, but I feel it so strongly every day. I'm in my... I call my office my war room because this is where I meet God every morning, seven days a week. I meet with God every morning. 
And so I call this my war room because I come in here on my knees and I battle spiritually. And there's a time of peace. But you know what? We are not going to see true peace unless it comes through Jesus. Because everything else is going to be false peace. Okay. Well, let's, let's just read the rest of this. It says, The God-given task. What profit has the worker from that in which he labors? I have seen the God-given task with which the sons of men are to be occupied. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. I know that nothing is better for them than to rejoice and to do good in their lives, and also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it that men should fear before him. That which is, that which is has already been. And what is to be has already been. And God requires an account of what is past. Injustice seems to prevail. Moreover, I saw under the sun, in the places of judgment, wickedness was there, and in the place of righteousness, iniquity was there. And that is what's going on right now in our country and all over the world. There is a lot of wickedness. There is a lot of lawlessness. Like we have laws, but they aren't enforcing the laws. They're letting people out of prison early. You know, before they serve their time. Well, that's not justice for whoever, you know, they injured or killed or whatever. God shall judge the righteous and the wicked. For there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. So God is the righteous judge. And let me tell you something about God being the righteous judge. He is holy and you can't convince him that you didn't do something like you can a judge here. You can't pay him off. You can't pay him off. You can't, you can't compromise him. And you can't threaten him. And those, that is the corruption of our court system right now is that judges can be threatened. They can be paid off. And they can be compromised. The righteous judge, God, there will be none of that. I said in my heart concerning the condition of the sons of men, God test them that they may see that they themselves are like animals. For what happens to the sons of men also happens to animals. One thing befalls them as one dies, so dies the other. Surely they all have one breath. Man has no advantage over animals, for all is vanity. All go to one place, all are from the dust, and all return to dust. Who knows the spirit of the sons of men, which goes upward, and the spirit of the animal, which goes down to the earth? So I perceive that nothing is better than that a man should rejoice in his own works, for that is his heritage." For who can bring him to see what will happen after him? Okay, well, I want to read the study part of this, and it may be pretty long, too, because this was a pretty long chapter. Oh, good. It's going to tell me about to cast away stones, because I was really wondering about that. And sometimes with the study Bible, I love it, but the things that I question, have a question about, usually aren't down here in the study thing. Maybe I should already know the answer. I don't know. But anyway. All right. Well, let's dive into the study notes. So again, there is a time, there is a season for everything. We go through many seasons in our lives. I really want to write a lesson about that. I really do. I wanted to do it today, but I procrastinated and I didn't come in here and write it. 
I really think it would probably write itself because I think that it would be pretty easy to write. You start thinking about all the seasons in your life, you know, all the jobs you've had, all the times that you have devoted to different things. Um, those are your seasons. And when we belong to God, through those seasons, good or bad, some of them are bad, some of them are good. Through those, we learn. We learn spiritual truths that we didn't know going in. So that's really important. I wish I could share with you what I shared on Facebook today. I may can. I think I can. I'll share you too about battles because it talked about a time of war and a time of peace and we are in very intense spiritual battle and I don't know if you can feel it but I feel it every day I feel that oppression every day and so how we get past that is we pray we use God to well we don't use God we um, we put on the armor of God so that we are protected and I don't know how you feel about spiritually cleansing your house, but I went through every room of my house and I spiritually cleansed it today by the blood of Jesus. And it felt pretty good. So I, I think things come through our TV. Things come through words that are said. There are, um, there are evil spirits that we can't see. Okay. So let's dive into this. Every activity has its proper time as ordained by God. You know, God is in charge of timing. His timing is perfect. His will is perfect. And his plan and purpose for us, if we follow him, is perfect. You know, and can be so much more fulfilling than us trying to fulfill our own plans and purposes and our own dreams and our own stuff. These rhythmic verses affirm that God is def that God definitely has a plan. Notice that each verse of this poem cites a characteristic activity of life matched with its opposite. Every activity has an appointed time. We can accept God's timetable and be or be crushed by it. The God who ordains the routine events of our lives is a compassionate, gracious, faithful God. We must trust His will and rest in Him. Birth and death, sowing and harvesting, weeping and laughing, mourning and dancing, speaking and keeping silent, and war and peace are common occurrences in life. We must fit ourselves appropriately into God's plan for our lives. I so agree with that. I so agree with that. And what people don't realize is when they're not following God's plan and purpose, <clears throat> they're missing out on tremendous blessings that they could be getting from God uh, by being obedient to him. To cast away stones. This is what I was wondering about. I'm sorry. I'm extremely thirsty and <clears throat> my voice seems to have gone. To cast away stones may be a euphemism for material, for martial, marital. For marital sex, while to gather stones may be a reference to refraining from that activity. Others suggest that these phrases literally refer to throwing stones into a field to prevent its cultivation and collecting the stones so the field can be utilized for planting. Well, you know what? I would think that the second is maybe more right than the first. A third possibility is that of scattering stones from an old building that has been destroyed while all the time collecting good stones to build a new structure. The meaning of these verses remains obscure. I would say the, the second two 
but I don't really see how this would be marital sex. I don't, I don't know. So I, I would think that the actual stone thing would be right. God has imposed limitations on life. As finite beings, we can catch only a small glimpse of God's majestic works. Thus, in recognition of our limitations, we should at least enjoy food, drink, and the results of our labor as God's gifts. Enjoyment in self is a gift from God. God's actions cannot be changed by mankind. Therefore, we should live in fear or reverence of him. The cynical nature of life is now described by, oh, I can't even say that. Thus, life appears to be just a wearisome treadmill. Okay, I guess that was the end of that sentence. The oppressed seem to be powerless. In confronting their oppressors, the author of Ecclesiastes pondered the prevalence of injust injustice and oppression in the world. Well, I see that right now. We talked about that while ago, that people can't get justice because they're not upholding the laws. If they were upholding the laws, we wouldn't have 15,000 Haitians at our southern border, you know, on top of the other people that we already have coming. Close our borders. Close Texas borders. They need to be closed. It's an invasion. There's no telling who's coming with all these other people. They may be families, but there's no telling who they're letting in. Okay. This important fact supported, I don't know how to say this name, Q. Helweth's, I don't know, re conclusions regarding the Vanity or emptiness of human existence. Life does not seem to deal fairly with people. Equity is hardly upheld in the courts of law. Thus, this person, that I can't pronounce her name, could only conclude that God would bring about justice in his own time and way. And that is so true. If people do not receive justice by people that have hurt them, uh, by people that have murdered them, that their family doesn't receive justice. God is the righteous judge. And like I said a while ago, he can't be bought. He can't be compromised. He can't be threatened. His judgment will be just. Whether or not this guy that I can't pronounce his name understood about life after death is not altogether clear. The prevalent view with Hebrew opinion is that meaningful life really ends at death. From this consideration, this person drew another temporary conclusion. Enjoy your work for no one knows what lies ahead. That's so true. You know, we don't know what lies ahead. We don't. We don't know what the future holds. That's why we do enjoy our life and we do take opportunities to share God's truth and to share the gospel of Jesus with others, which I am going to do. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know what means I'm going to use. Let's do this one. Between you and God. And I'm gonna I'm gonna try to write a lesson. I haven't written one in a very long time. A very long time. I used to write lessons all the time for jail ministry. And I really enjoyed that. I just I don't have the time to do the things that I want to do. And it is not anybody's fault but my own for wasting time. So I need to get more organized. I am in a season right now of um, getting some things done that I do annually for my job. So that takes, you know, some time too. But, okay, let's talk about between you and God. Let's talk about 
talk about these two pictures. Okay, our sin separates us from God. The light on the right represents God. God is perfect, holy, and loving, and has provided a way for salvation. So again, this picture, this is God, this is man, and sin is the separation between us and God. In contrast, the man in darkness represents man in his sin, separated from God. Sin is more than wrong thoughts or actions, but a heart that is inclined towards evil. Jeremy, Jeremiah 17, 9. The Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 23. Apart from God's grace, man is without hope. Jesus paid the debt for our sin. The cross, see Jesus on the cross, went to the promise on Saturday. So I got to see that scene. The cross is a picture of God's grace. God sent his own son, Jesus, to earth as a man. Jesus died on the cross for us so that he might take away our sins. 1 John 3, 5. The Bible says God demonstrates his own love for us. In this, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. Jesus took away our sin in his own body on the cross so that he could bring us to God. See 1 Peter 2, 24, 3, 18. The Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John three sixteen. There is nothing we can do on our own to pay the penalty for our sin. If we could, then God would not have sent his son to die for us. Only the blood of Jesus can wash away your sin. That is so true. So here's the next series of pictures. After Jesus died, men buried him in a tomb, sealed with a huge stone and guarded by soldiers. Jesus is risen. Three days later, God raised Jesus from the dead, declaring that he truly is the Son of God and that God was satisfied with his payment for sin. Jesus then appeared to many people before returning to his Father in heaven. So Jesus is the way. The only way we can come to God is through faith in Jesus Christ. Only Jesus has paid the penalty. God demand, demands for our sin. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. But just knowing these facts does not ensure salvation. We must respond to God's grace by trusting in Jesus Christ alone as the only one who can forgive our sin and give us God's gift of eternal life. And this is the next this is the next set of pictures. Trust only in Jesus. The penalty for our sin is eternal separation from God, but Jesus offers you the free gift of eternal life with God. We need to accept this gift God offers. The way we demonstrate our faith in Jesus Christ is by trusting in him alone for complete payment of our sin. The Bible says that our sin is removed through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe, Romans 3.22. Are you trusting in Jesus for your salvation? The Bible says if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you, uh, Romans 10.9, if you are trusting in Christ for your salvation, Tell God by praying something like this. And so I'm going to say this prayer, but I'm going to give you time if you would like to repeat it. Thank you for loving me. Dear God, sorry. Dear God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you.
I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sin and that you raised him from the dead. I trust Jesus alone to forgive me and take away all my sins. I confess that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, it is not the words of a prayer that save you. God saves you when you respond in faith to his grace. If you trusted in Christ today, Jesus promises you in John 10, 27, 28. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I will give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. Okay, so we have one more page here. Okay. And this is another E3 sources, just like this and the bracelet that I read sometimes. So it has the same emblems on the back. It has the heart. It has the praying man. It has the Bible. It has the fellowship hands. And it has the evangelism because you were saved by the precious blood of christ you should follow god and learn to please him here are some of his requirements for you to grow spiritually so we have the heart it says love god in all people you shall love the lord your god with all your heart soul and mind this is the great and foremost commandment and a second is like it you shall love your neighbor as yourself Matthew twenty two thirty six through 40. So pray to God constantly. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Study the Bible, God's word daily. Start with the Gospel of John. Read, chapter, read one chapter each day. Like newborn babes long for the pure milk of the word, that by it you may grow in respect to salvation. 1 Peter 2.2 2. Meet regularly with other Christians, not forsaking your own assembly together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. Hebrews 10.25 Tell other people about Jesus. And he, Jesus, said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Mark sixteen fifteen. So if you did invite Jesus to be your Savior tonight, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. The angels are rejoicing and your name is being written in the Lamb's book of life. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus Christ, his Son. All right, well, I forgot to read what I wrote this morning about battles, about spiritual battles. And then I also wanted to do some testimony. Where did my song go? No. I love... Hello. That's not what I want to do. I don't want to keep going. Let's go up here. Okay. Don't go there. That's where I want to go. My computer just kind of had a mind of its own and I don't, it's not. I don't have a touch screen anymore. I'm letting Seth use my old computer for school, which is working really well. So today I have I love these t-shirts that I buy for from uh, Faith and Love. I have my I Can Only Imagine t-shirt on, and it's very soft, and I really, really, really 
love these t-shirts. They're a little big on my arm, but I like the longer sleeves, so I'm willing, I'm willing to do that. Okay, so let me let me read this. <clears throat> I'm sorry, my throat's not great today. So my message today, spiritual warfare, that's that's what I got. I woke up thinking about spiritual warfare. We are in it. It is intense and will become more and more intense until the rapture. <clears throat> now, I also listened to someone on YouTube speak about this before I wrote this. So he kind of, I guess maybe that's where I got my message is from what I listened to him say. I love this song and message, Surrounded. This is how I fight my battles. I love that song. Uh, saying here by the upper room. I love these lyrics that include Psalm 23 scriptures. So their lyrics include some Psalm 23. Uh, day eight, pray for our nation, humility and submission to God in our government and all generations. Pray for our enemies. We need to pray for our enemies. God said to pray for our enemies. Jesus said to pray for our enemies. We need to pray for our enemies. Is it easy? No. But you pray good things for them. And you know what? You will be surprised how God will change your heart and how God will change their heart. It's amazing. I have seen it over and over and over again. Praying on Ephesians 6 for this battle daily. We need that prayed on every day. Maybe repeatedly. You know, maybe... Maybe we, every few seconds, we come in here and we pray on that, that armor. Rebuking the evil out of our lives. Our homes, which means choosing better things for our kids to watch. Better things for our kids to do. Um, and ourselves. Ourselves. I was, yesterday I was home by myself, so I thought, I want to watch a funny movie. So I went to Amazon and I couldn't find anything that I, I don't like bad language. I don't like risque situations. I don't like any of that. I choose not to do any of that. And so I really couldn't find anything. So I go, why do I have this? Although Seth does, Seth, there are some children's movies that Seth can watch from time to time. But you know what? Those are getting few and far between. But I still order things from Amazon because there are no Christian sites like Amazon. If a Christian site like Amazon comes out, I will dump them. But right now there's not. And I don't like to shop. Okay. I don't know how I got on that subject. While rebuking the evil out of our lives, our homes, spiritual cleansing. I said I did a spiritual cleansing of every room in my house. I'm starting here in my war room where I do most of my spiritual battle on my knees. My victories in Jesus' name. That, that's part of the lyrics. Praise will be my song. My melody is a weapon. Jesus will overcome all evil. Evil will bow to Jesus. They don't think so. But they will bow to Jesus. They will. This is our declaration today. We will see all evil bow at the feet of Jesus. We will see it. I love the scene in the promise where Jesus raises his hand to Satan and he flees. I love that. Once he, um, Once he is resurrected from the grave, and Satan comes up there and he goes, <laughs> and Satan flees backwards. I love that part. Our enemy cannot stand up to the power of Jesus. If you are proclaiming the name of Jesus in your house and you are listening to Christian music, the enemy can't be here. He doesn't want to be here around our praising and worshiping Jesus. Declare today to stand against all evil in Jesus' name. And there's a lot of evil out there. All kinds of forms of evil are out there. I watch a lot of true crime. I'm amazed. I'm amazed at the things that I hear. 
If Jesus is not your Savior, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. And so I'm going to drop it there because I already gave the salvation message. But I also want to read what I have a huge praise about today. And I'm going to give Facebook all the props for it because I had really forgotten. Because I don't have a memory anymore. So I want to read what I wrote on my, my main page today. If I can get on there. Oh, that's my story. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. No, that's, I can't read it over there. It's not like, I might can if I make it small. It's not like, um, it doesn't do the same as the other. No, I think this is just my feed. How do I get to my page? can do all this on my phone, but I'm using my phone. Oh, there I am. There I am. There's my name. I've been trying to do a share of my pictures from The Promise, but I've yet to get them to upload. So I don't know what is up with that. Um, I didn't want to do that. That's annoying. I don't want to do live events. I want to do my share. Okay. So this is, oh good, I can't expand it. This is my share from two years ago. Just two years ago. 2019. 2019 was a very good year and it was a very uh trying year so last treatment number five ricky ringing the bell next appointment follow up in december praising jesus thank you to our donors for helping ricky be able to receive this type of treatment we are in the process of thank you notes but i want ricky to help me write them I did write one and then like I got the paper, I got the envelopes, I got everything. And then uh, COVID hit. It's not much of an excuse, but I'm not a good thank you writer anyway. That's why I do things like this. This week has been crazy with three, tre with three treatments and Ricky working on days without treatment. My husband was blessed to be able to take cyber knife treatments which is pinpoint radiation in Fort Worth. And um, it was very affordable. We paid cash and it was five treatments in two weeks. And there was like a, a week where he had to go get set up for it and get some tests ran and everything. But within three weeks, we were through with treatment. It was a gift from God. That's why I want to share this with you. His testimony. So, um, thank you for sweet cards and prayers that opened the doors that needed to be opened. Cyber knife treatment was more affordable and what God intended as his process. He asked us to trust his process. He told me not to worry. I will provide before Ricky's diagnosis. Yeah, he told me that before he was diagnosed. He told me, he said, I will heal him, but you have to trust my process. So we did. We trusted his process. Um, he started preparing me spiritually for this battle many months ago. He did. We trusted his process. God's timing is never late and right on time. Just like this was a season. This was a three-week season in our life. Well, actually, it started, I think, in June or July. I'm thinking that it's like parallel to 
now that we've gotten so far away, it's like parallel to what we went through with Seth, like month-wise, the months that it took. Um, we will always be thankful and grateful. We'll always be thankful, grateful, blessed, overwhelmed, and humbled by the outpouring of love and compassion by so very many people. God bless you all abundantly. So this is what I said today. I shared this today. I said, thank you, Facebook, for reminding me of this memory today. This was Ricky's last treatment in Fort Worth. I believe Seth's transplant date is tomorrow, which was 12 years ago. God is faithful to answer our prayers. We will never forget your prayers, notes, cards, and donations that made Ricky's treatment possible. So my husband is not on Facebook. But. Uh, well, not really. I thought people would have at least liked it, but only four people have liked it. So, well, it's okay. I don't care. It it was meant for me to share my testimony. So you may be sick today. If you are sick today, know that God can heal you. You have to trust him. We had to trust him with this. I think maybe he was diagnosed with prostate cancer in either June or July. I would have to look back in Facebook, actually, because I don't know whether I have it on a calendar or anything. I'm sure I do, but I don't have the calendar. Anyway, God is faithful to heal. And Seth has been in remission for 12 years. He had his transplant I think tomorrow will be 12 years I need to look in some of my stuff and see if I can find the date because I don't know I think it was the 21st though I know it was in September because we didn't get out until December got out on December the 4th right before Christmas this God is so good because his timing is perfect he takes us through these seasons but he carries us through these seasons we don't have to go through these seasons by ourselves. Jesus will walk us every step of the way, which is so amazing. It's so amazing to see how God will bring you these things. He'll bring, he'll, he'll bring you these people. He'll provide things that are so miraculous. You know, I was trying to share with my friend today some testimony. I think I'm going to write it all down, and um, tomorrow night might just be testimony about cancer healing. Um, it happens. We have to trust God. We have to trust His process of healing. Sometimes it makes no sense. Really, two weeks, and, you know, we'll be done. But, yes, that was His process. That was His process, and my husband had hardly any side effects from that he had minimal side effects so if you have cancer and you're looking for treatment uh put it in the comments and uh i will get you the information i don't have a card or anything here at my desk i, don't think. I think i gave my last card out that i had for that it's texas center for um blood disorders or something it's it's like cancer treatment they do all kinds of things they do the they do the other radiation too but it takes longer and it's more treatments this is pinpoint just go into the area of the cancer awesome 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 all right well i'm going to get off of here i need to go and Feed my child, not feed him, but fix his dinner. I need to go fix this dinner because I had cabbage and sausage tonight and broccoli and cauliflower and carrots. So I had pretty much mostly vegetables tonight. And uh, he's not going to touch any of it. He won't eat any of it. So I have to go fix something for him. So we are down to me doing the blessing from God because I can't bless anyone, but God can bless everyone. And God wants to bless us. 
God also wants us to commit, and he wants us to humble ourselves. Okay, Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We all need some peace. All right, well, I'm just going to do a generic prayer for our people that come here, their families, and uh, for my family and my friends and their families. And I'm going to get off of here. God, we just thank you for all the many blessings that you've given us. God, we thank you for uh, sending your son to offer us salvation, to offer us a place in your kingdom as your children. We are so thankful, God. God, I just pray for anybody that comes here. God, if they need Jesus as their Savior, please let them get saved. If they just need an encouraging word, just I just pray that your words were encouraging tonight. And the testimony that I shared was encouraging too. And God, we just uh, I just pray for all of my friends and, and my family members. God, I just pray that you would protect them and provide for them and bless them, God. Just uh, just lead and guide them also, God, in your ways. And uh, I pray for all of uh, just anybody that comes here and their families, God. I pray for blessings, protection, and provision, that you would guide them in your ways, God. And... Uh, just pray for a movement, a Jesus movement that can't be stopped. Pray for this um, SoCal harvest, God. We pray that many will be saved. Many souls will be touched. Many will be drawn by the Holy Spirit to Jesus. We pray for Greg Laurie as he brings the message, as he's brought so many good messages, God, through your word that have brought many to salvation. We just pray that uh, that would happen again. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, have an awesome rest of your night and an awesome tomorrow. Tomorrow's Tuesday. Much love and cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.